Welcome to Corey Turner Talks Cars. Be sure to help us out by hitting the like button and subscribing. As large car brands like Hyundai push alternative fuels like hydrogen and Tesla continues to push battery technology to free the community of the anchor of the internal combustion engine, many forget that alternative fuels were the driving force of many of the early cars. The Stanley Motor Carriage Company, founded by twin brothers Francis and Freelon Stanley in 1902, was a manufacturer of such alternative fuel cars. Their fuel of choice? Steam. Now, the brothers didn't start out in the automotive industry, which was, of course, in its infancy at the time, but instead, they owned a photographic dry plate business, and the venture was very successful, and after selling it to Eastman Kodak, they started working on their first car in 1897. Now, by 1899, just two years later, they had designed, produced, and sold over 200 cars. At the time, this made them the largest car manufacturer in the United States. In 1899, Freeland Stanley took his wife, Flora, on a drive, but it wasn't just any drive. It was to the highest peak in the northern eastern part of the United States, Mount Washington in New Hampshire. Now, the 7.6-mile journey took more than two hours and was significant because it was the first time a car had ever made the trip, and the attention gained helped them in their designs, and eventually it led them to selling those designs to Locomobile. I haven't heard of them either. But anyway, not ready to get out of the car business, the brothers formed the Stanley Motor Carriage Company in 1902. Their cars consisted of lightweight wooden bodies attached to tubular steel frames. The steam was created in a vertical fire tube boiler mounted under the seat and a vaporizing bunker underneath. At first, they used gasoline, but later they ran their engines on kerosene. The design was ingenious. The boiler used several layers of piano wire, which reinforced it and gave it strength, but still kept it lightweight. Early versions used copper vertical fire tubes, but later switched to welded steel because the installation of condensers caused oil, you know, in the expansion joints. Now, steam creates a lot of pressure, but the Stanley steamer boilers were reasonably safe because they were fitted with safety valves. If, if something did happen, one of those uh, valves failed, the, the pressure would cause a fail in one of those joints before the boiler itself had a chance to explode. If the joints failed, they would cause leakage and douse the burner and keep the passengers from, well, relatively safe and from getting hurt. They were safe and there was never a, a reported uh, incident of a Stanley steamer boiler system ever exploding. Now, since they had sold their earlier designs to Locomobile, they had to make some changes, which resulted in them creating a twin cylinder engine geared directly to the rear axle. This eliminated the need for a drive shaft, a clutch, or even a transmission. The boiler moved from under the seat to the front of the car and gained the nickname of the coffin nose. <laughs> now the engine was small but packed a powerful punch uh, at the time. Under extreme pressure it produced 10 horsepower but still had safety engineered into its design. The safety valve was set at 650 psi and the burner would automatically cut back at 500 psi. Horsepower could be increased to 20 horsepower after being bored out and range was greatly increased after condensers were added in 1915. Stainless steamer cars had great performance. In 1906, they were able to turn the mile in 28.2 seconds and reach a top speed of 127 miles per hour. It took gas-powered cars another five years to break that record. And uh, steam cars, it took them until 2009. Now, in 1970, over 500 cars were produced, but unfortunately, it was the beginning of the end. The internal combustion engine was beginning to gain popularity. Their designs were getting better, and with the induction of uh, features like electric starters, they were not only easier to operate, but also cheaper and safer. The company attempted marketing campaign to recapture some of that market share, but it wasn't enough to turn around sales. In 1918, Francis died in a car accident as he ran off the road to avoid farm wagons that were traveling side by side. Freeline, who had built the company with his brother, ended up selling his interest in the company to Prescott Warren. Without the vision of its founding brothers, the company declined in both sales and, honestly, in innovation. Internal combustion engine cars continued to improve with lowering costs. You see, in 1924, you could purchase a Stanley 740D sedan for $3,950. That's over $63,000 in today's money. It was an expensive car, but when you compared it to the Model T that sold for only $500 or $7,900 today, well, it's easy to see why Ford was winning. The public wanted faster cars, faster start times, and lower prices and all things a struggling Stanley company couldn't produce. In 1924, just 22 years after being formed by the brothers, 
the Stanley Motor Company shut its doors for good. Now, as the automotive industry searches for alternatives to the internal combustion engine, it's a shame that we didn't get to see the path that the Stanley Steamer could have and would have let us down. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all of that. Let's talk about cars tomorrow.